created the Negra guitar before there were only Cypress, you know. So this is chapter 7 is Paco's creation of the Negra, male Negra, and the mild male Negra guitars. It's worth to mention that Paco de Lucia was also indirectly the pioneer on the research for a different sound in flamenco guitars other than the Cypress sound. This is how the mild male and male Negra guitars were created back in the late 60s. Nowadays AG still continue to make guitars with many different kinds of woods, and it all started with Paco's radical elimination of his life of the Cypress guitars to play with, as he systematically avoided the Cypress sound, its tone and feel or pulsation touch altogether. He escaped Cypress guitars for more than 40 years and until his death. I still wonder why so many seemingly blind, deaf colleagues around do not even ponder about why Paco de Lucia may have done such a thing. I remember Paco once said that if you want to find the number one ignorant person regarding the instrument itself, just go and find a professional flamenco guitar player. This may sound satirical, but as you can see from facts, it is 100% truth. Instead of asking themselves why Paco avoided Cyprus to begin with, today professional players and not professional ones stubbornly insist 
to play Cypress guitars again and again as if hypnotized. Of course, only to get a very thin, skinny and weak tone without any sustain or presence whatsoever, as you can unambiguously listen from this recording. You see the tone is just totally metallic and devoid of, of power there. So then on the other hand, Paco de Lucia created out of his imagination the now well-known concept of negra guitar for flamenco, meaning a guitar not made of cypress back and sides, but made instead of rosewood, either Indian rosewood for mild male sound or Brazilian rosewood for the negra male sound. Paco originated his flamenco negra idea by experiencing while playing the beauty and deeper tone of guitars like this. So he was inspired on guitars from the great luthier Hermann Hauser. Here you can notice that this was sold in an auction uh, for $150,000. Dollars, so it's a very interesting guitar. And then Paco tried these guitars, of course. And then he's, he's, he, he thought, well, this, this maybe is a very good idea to, to do. And there's a link from the Christie's Gallery, anyway. Uh, all the links will be there in the description, in the, in the article are there. And that's how Paco played some of these guitars, made in the 50s and 40s. And then he said, you know what, this is what we need to, to replace the Cypress. Well, it was the first try. Guitars with the big sustain and projection, those were great classical guitars all made in the 40s and 50s. Paco had access to those guitars because they were shown to him by some friends, ironically enough for some, not for me. Those guitars were not guitars made in Spain, but made in Germany by the great Luthier Hermann Hauser I. Paco being satisfied as he was with the available Cyprus guitars at that time and disappointed by the whole Cyprus dogma inside the flamenco circles of those days. Uh, after a while, I'm fully convinced that those Hauser classical guitars he tried sounded far better regarding sustain and projection than any separate guitar he had played. And uh, he owned some very nice ones like this Marcelo Barrero 1953, like this here. No. This is another link from Christie's Gallery, a $32,000 guitar sold in an auction. And this is a Marcelo Barbero guitar, right? So, uh, the thing was that even those were not satisfying him. Uh, well, anyways, in the late 60s, he ordered the Spanish Luthier to make a guitar for him. Uh, and this would be the first attempt to build the Flamenco Negra. Like so here, here we have this information. In the, in, the, in the late 60s, which means a rosewood guitar. He took that from the classical guitars to see, let's see if this gives us so much a little bit more presence because with the Cypress thing it's, it's just a nightmare, I cannot get any quality to He avoided Cypress for 40 years, but now still people still keep getting guitars of Cypress because they don't know. This is what, all these things are very tricky to know, you need to get educated on it and, and spend years and follow a teacher also. This, these are, and play, you have to play very well, not only play, play and play very well because otherwise you don't know. <laughs> What they're saying about this, you have to be it's like becoming an expert on diamonds. If I go to buy a diamond there to Brazil or somewhere, of course they will cheat me because they can tell me this is this is the real diamond and I don't know about it. I don't know what to look on it with the, the lens or whatever. So such a difficult thing is to you know to have to you have to get an expert to get the diamond like that to know what is different between this and that diamond. 
maybe fake even. So in instruments it's the same, you need to know also. And because people didn't know then, so thanks to God Paco started with this changing the the same of the same of the same thing with the Cypress and he, that he eliminated from his life the Cypress tone wood because it has low quality. In his opinion, in my opinion of course also I do agree that there are so many other better woods for, for a blank or for a female tone guitar like satin, cherry, uh, ash, fresno, maple and many other. So why are you using only one thing? Well this is this is the ironical thing that here we have then the four pack who created those there and well this would be the first attempt to build a flamenco negra meaning um, a non-cypress flamenco guitar and it's also interesting that Paco also took the idea of a thicker box uh, from those classical guitars there and he tried first so that first negra guitar he made in Spain had nothing less than 12 centimeters of box, box thickness, side thickness as you can see in the following video, so you can appreciate that this was very thick guitar. So you see this is very thick, 11, 11 uh, 12 centimeters. So it was just ex extremely thick that guitar. And uh, before the 60s, so Cypress was the only and only wood used to make flamenco guitars. Have a link here. Cypress is wood. Cypress is wood. It was introduced only because of its availability and low price, not because of its quality. Because this tradition of, of making instruments, if you see historically, this comes out of violin making also, which is older tradition. And therefore, in violin making, well, Stradivarius, why Stradivari did not use Cypress? If Cypress was so great, Tom and all that, why he didn't use it? For violence. For his violence, instead of making. I will ask this question. This is number one. And the other is that, what you are saying, that is the fact that many people just say an opinion that, well, Cyprus is the, is the best word for flamenco, and Cyprus is the best, the only traditional word like that. They are just parroting this stuff, but really speaking, they don't have even a known uh, personal point of view on the subject. Because to have a personal point of view on the subject, then you, you would have to play other female guitars, like this cherry guitar, the maple guitar, the satin east or west Indian satin wood, etc. Other types of female guitars which replace for good the cypress wood and which have the characteristic of a very refined treble sound and also have more projection and more power than the cypress. So if you don't uh, play those, how do you say an opinion about it? It's just um, that's paroting thing. Paroting is not knowledge. When you if you repeat something, I can teach a parrot to repeat something. Cypress is good, cypress is good, cypress is good. And he can go there hundred years like that. But that doesn't mean one thing really. So therefore Cypress was available and unfortunately it became the standard wood to tone wood to be used just because it was cheaper than other fine female sounding tone woods, nicer woods which are also suitable for blanca guitars or for female guitars. Here we have a link. Practically speaking, it's all about the tone of the guitar, the sound and the woods. Before guitars, before Paco de Lucia, flamenco guitar was only Cypress one, which he wanted to get rid of, by the way. <laughs> That's why he avoided it for 40 years. The Cypress tone, because he never liked the Cypress tone, has no presence, it's too trebly and has no quality in it. It was just only used uh, because it was cheaper than other quality uh, woods, which also will give a tone female tone, meaning more refined in trebles in the high frequency register. AG has made around 8 or 10 different ones with cherry, satin, 
eastern setting, uh, Fresno, Ash, what not? Meaning, it is possible to do a, a great fem female guitar with other woods other than the same of the same of the same cypress, which is no, not a good tone wood, in my opinion, and also in Paco's opinion, of course, that's why he introduced the negra concept, which is the male guitar. In the 60s, he said, please make, order a luthier, that please make this experiment, I want to make a, a guitar with, you know, lower bridge, and those things which were considered flamenco measurements then. So then, therefore, uh, what I mean is that there is a, a, a wide range of possible superior choices of wood for the back and sides. Uh, as you can see from the following 10 pictures, and here we have maple, persimmon, ash, white ebony, eucalypt, mobingi, Brazilian mahogany, cherry, satin, and clear cocos wood, which are these woods here. These are all better woods to use for the female tone, the ash, then white ebony, eucalyptus, mobingi, the Brazilian Mubingi, then other different ones, which is cherry, satin, we talk about the Stella, fantastic guitar, and and then uh, clear cocos wood, which is ultra amazing wood. This this wood you can compare cypress with this. Come on, it's comparing cypress. This is same like saying Ferrari is the same like Volkswagen. No, it's not the same. So this is what it is. The reality, uh, and then Paco, of course, experimenting further with Indian rosewood, also created uh, a third category besides the blanca and negra. This third category of sound is often called uh, the in guitar slang. This is called the mild male guitar, uh, and this is the sound here. We have one link to to show you this. <laughs> the mild male tone, which is also kind of female tone. And then, well, of course, this mild male 
refers to a midpoint in timber, uh, a sort of sound, so to say, in between the blanca and the negra. Actually, it is more towards the negra region. But such guitars in AG, of course, these ones have also female quality and are generally made with fine tone woods like clear tulip wood, oven coal, teak, Australian eucalyptus combined, purple heart and Nigerian satin wood, which are these woods here. The oven coal is the teak wood, Australian eucalyptus, purple heart, this one might mail sound that is a Nigerian satin wood. This here, so this is very, very, very interesting types of wood. And then, of course, uh, I would say that well, personally, just as Paco did, I do prefer Brazilian rosewood or similar tone woods for the back and sides to the main negra concept woods in the category of full concert negra male guitar and the newest ones in AG are made with Brazilian rosewood or with closely related tone woods, tones wood like cocobolo rosewood, tulip wood, caucus wood, Hawaiian koa, Brazilian rosewood, kingwood, bahia rosewood, dark tulip wood, cacaranda and northern Brazilian uh, Pink wood, which are this, this here. This is the, the category of pure negra sound. This is the koa, the Hawaiian koa wood for the negra. Check this. King wood, by a rosewood, different types of, of, of Brazilian rosewood and the northern Brazilian pink wood. So I don't like much Blancas except for some specific recordings of music which require that particular kind of female sound. I mean for music like the Anjuez, what we just listened before, or music like this. You see that recording there? This is this required that, and of course, also very some pieces there need these for recordings, but otherwise, uh, I prefer the negras, the male negras. And as you can see from those previous pictures we saw, it is possible to innovate in sound through the use of uncommon tone woods as raw materials to make flamenco guitars. After all, what does it mean the so called flamenco sound? So this term flamenco sound this seems to be a confusing thing. And here we have a link to explain that a bit as well. Well, 
first flamenco, we have to say first that. It's going to say, is this flamenco sound? Then what do you understand for flamenco? It may be different from what I do understand flamenco is. So, according to Pablo de Lucia's definition, we posted the description of the link where he said, flamenco has to have the element of improvisation in there. And therefore, this exploring new territories, etc., is very important for our concept. And, well, of course, with the guitars, happen the same thing, meaning that these instruments are totally different from the traditional flamenco guitars. So when you say flamenco sound, this means the same thing always. There is 20 million repetitions of the same cypress thing, the rosewood thing, the negative traditional, everything. But this surrounding concept, and of course, Paco was so much supporting this for many years ago and encouraging this evolution, evolving towards that futuristic stuff like what comes next. So you see, this is the, the main idea. And then, of course, having also proved that a nice sound comes only from playability. So, for um, based on how easy to play is the guitar you're playing. And based on the quality of sound I got in recordings, like those we heard before, and one more I will put now, I cannot feel very excited myself to personally live day after day the joy of experiencing and exploring the flow of my playing through all the superb enhancements of AG, which will hopefully inspire other intelligent luthiers and guitar players to search, research, and fight for the excellence of what is different in the most positive sense, of course, and get that what archaic instruments can't offer us anymore today, thus creating an ideal scenario to produce guitar music playing as effortlessly as in a dream. I mean recordings like this.
So that was all done with the Megan Mail guitars. Hubo un roto que descubrí ahí en la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería, cada músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería, debería aprender porque la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando y cómo estás tocando, de qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no? Pablo, sí, Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo de Andalucía. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrados puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo, que nos pasamos muchas horas elaborando esa música. 